Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en curso de inglés online tve.com y por menos de un euro al día. Hi. Yeah, don't, don't wait outside. Come in, come in, come in. Don't wait outside. Anda, ¿qué haces tú ahí? Esperando afuera. Entra, está nevando. Don't wait outside, it's snowing. Don't wait outside. Come in, come in, come in, come in. This, this house is your house. My house is your house. Come in, come on, come on, come on. Venga, entra, venga, entra. Come on, come in, come on, come in, come on, come on, come in. Don't wait outside. Don't wait outside. It's cold outside. It's snowing. All right, es una ventisca. Don't wait outside. It's a blizzard. It's snowy, a snowstorm. Don't wait outside. Come in. Come in. Come into my house. Come into my home. Come into my palace. And don't wait outside. Why are you waiting outside? What are you doing waiting outside? Come in. Come on. Come in. Come in, please. Hola y bienvenidos a la clase 147. Ahora vamos a ver la frase Don't wait outside, come in. No te esperas afuera, entra. Y ahora nos centraremos en la primera parte de la frase Don't wait. Otro negativo, imperativo negativo. Don't wait, don't wait. No decimos don't you wait, una atracción literal. Don't wait, do not, contraído, don't Wait. Aquí tenemos otra vez la W tan difícil. Don't wait. Muy bien. W wait. Hemos practicado con mojado wet en la clase anterior y aquí es wait. Wait. Abriendo la boca. Don't wait. Eso es. Y ahora vamos a ver más ejemplos. Don't wait for me. I'm running late. La preposición que va con esperar es wait. Oh, for, for, for. No lo puedes olvidar, por favor. Don't wait for me. No me esperes. Llegaré tarde. I'm running late. Don't wait. Start eating. No me esperes. Empieza a comer. Don't wait. Start eating. Don't wait. Yo, yo, yo. It's me, your favorite DJ, live for you. And I have a new song. Se llama No Esperes. Don't wait. Y sale en el disco nuevo que también se llama No esperes, don't wait. Y ya está a la venta, así que no esperes, don't wait. Cómpralo ya, buy it now. No esperes, don't wait. ¿Cómo se llama el disco? Eso es, don't wait. ¿Y sabes qué? Hay un remix de No Esperes, Don't Wait. ¿Quieres escucharlo? Ok. Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait for me. A ver. Ok, juntos, ¿vale? Don't wait, don't wait, don't wait for me. Si eres fiel seguidor mío, live for you. Don't wait, no esperes, buy it now. Ya está a la venta, así que don't wait, don't wait, buy it now. Entonces, no me esperes, don't wait. No te esperes, don't wait. Muy bien, tenemos bien asimilado el imperativo negativo, don't wait. Y aquí tenemos la segunda palabra, Outside, afuera, outside, literalmente afuera, lado, outside, outside. Y el contrario es inside, dentro, outside, inside, outside, inside. Son una pareja que hay que aprender ahora mismo. Outside, inside. Muy bien, veamos más ejemplos con outside. It's cold outside, hace frío afuera. Don't wait there, no esperas allí. Come in, entra. It's cold outside, hace frío afuera. He's waiting outside and I don't know why. Está esperando afuera y no sé por qué. Outside. Y ahora vamos a ver la palabra del día, que significa frío o helado. Sí, no es cold, es chilly. Chilly, otra manera de decir frío, cold. 
chili. Oh, it's chili outside. Hace frío afuera. Chili. Como la, el país. Chile. Chile. Pero decimos chili. Muy bien. Hey, look, look. Can't you see? It's, it's sunny outside. It's a beautiful day outside. Look, look. It's so sunny and nice. I'm, I'm going to work outside. I got my baby. I'm going to take my baby with me outside. We're going to work. We're going to transfer files outside. We're going to update the system outside. Why not? I can take my baby with me anywhere. Claro, si dice outside, fuera. Outside, outside. I can take it outside. Actually, let's uh, just check the weather here. It looks beautiful outside. What? It says it's cold outside. How can it be cold outside? It's two degrees outside. Oh, that's too cold. It's too cold to go outside. It's too cold to work outside. I guess I'll be staying and working inside after all. Ah. Oh. Quiero que traduzcas entra. Has dicho enter, es que no lo usamos. Siempre usamos un phrasal verb. En este caso es come in, porque estás entrando en mi espacio. Come in, come in. Y si yo entro a tu espacio y tú digas enter, entra, decimos to go in, go in. Pero aquí estás entrando a mi espacio. Come in, entra, come in. Veamos más ejemplos con este phrasal verb. Come in, dinner is ready. Entra. La comida está preparada. Come in. Don't wait outside. It's chilly. Entra. No te esperes afuera. Hace frío. Chili. La palabra del día. Chili. ¿Te acuerdas? Entonces, ahora vamos a ver toda la frase. Don't wait. No te esperes. Don't wait. Y no, don't you wait. Don't wait. Tienes la, pro la pronunciación perfecta, ¿no? Don't wait. ¿Afuera cómo era? Muy bien. Don't wait. Outside. Entra. Enter. No. Come in, el phrasal verb tan importante. Come in, apúntalo ya. Come in. Come in. Come in. ¿Qué es lo que está pasando aquí? ¿Es que no me oyen? Dilo conmigo, por favor. Ready? Okay. Come in. Otra vez. Come in. No entiendo nada. Bueno. Seriously? Come in. Oh, come in, come in, come in, come in. No entiendo nada. ¿Qué es lo que se dice en español? Entra, ¿verdad? Okay. Si digo eso, enter, enter, y ahora sí, no decimos en inglés enter, decimos come in, come in, come in, come in. Nunca voy a entender a esos españoles, por favor. What a lovely present. Wow, what a lovely present. That's really kind of you. Uh, I really appreciate it. It was very kind of you. Ha sido muy amable de por tu parte o de tu parte. That was very kind of you. Lo te lo agradezco de verdad. O en inglés decimos lo agradezco. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. It's a lovely present. It's a lovely, lovely thing. Encanta. Es un regalo encantador. Me encanta. I love it. It's a lovely present. Um, that was very kind of you. That was, or it was, very kind of you. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. La forma más corriente decir, te lo agradezco de verdad. Gracias, gracias, gracias. I really appreciate it. It's a lovely gift. It's a lovely present. Thank you very much.
Hola, bienvenidos a la clase número 147. Y la frase de hoy es... What a lovely present. That was very nice of you. I really appreciate it. Que en español es... ¡Qué regalo más bonito! Fue un detalle por tu parte. Te lo agradezco de veras. Muy bien, pues vamos por la primera parte que es... What a lovely present. ¡Qué regalo más bonito! Ahora, aquí tenemos la estructura what a o what an si le sigue un sustantivo con sonido vocálico. Ahora, si el sustantivo es incontable, quitamos el artículo y decimos what. Por ejemplo, what cold water. Muy bien, vamos a ver unos cuantos ejemplos. What a lovely day. I think I'll take a walk. ¡Qué día más bonito! Creo que daré un paseo. Ahora, cuidado con lovely, que no es lovely, sino Lovely, lovely. Muy bien. Vamos con más. What an easy teaching point. ¿Qué teaching point más fácil? Pues claro que sí. Nos vemos en un minuto. Well, you know, I'm trying to prepare my next masterpiece. But the thing is, it's Destiny's birthday tomorrow. I guess it makes sense to make a masterpiece for her. You know, something lovely, just like her. Something really lovely. Hmm. The problem is, I don't have much money, I don't have many resources, but I need to make something lovely. Something that will be lovely. Lovely. Something lovely for her. Lovely, we say. Lovely. That's right. Maybe I have something even in my pockets I can work with. Hmm. Oh, look, I have a key. I, the key to my heart. That's lovely, right? I could make a piece of art using this key, or tissue. I could make a lot of lovely things with a tissue. You know, I could make a little, you know, a shape, a heart. I could make a, a, a flower, a rose out of this tissue. I could make something really lovely. She deserves something lovely. Mm. Gotta think of an idea. <laughs> Hola de nuevo. Vamos con la segunda parte de la frase de hoy, que es That was very nice of you. Es decir, fue un detalle por tu parte o fue muy amable por tu parte. Ahora aquí tenemos that was, eso fue very nice, muy amable, of you, por tu parte. Cuidado con of you, of you. Enlázalo como si fuera una sola palabra. Repite conmigo, of you, of you. Muy bien. Vamos a ver algunos ejemplos más. That was very generous of you. Eso fue muy generoso por tu parte. That was very kind of you. That was very sweet of you. Y ahora, ¿cómo se dice? Eso fue muy servicial por tu parte. A ver. Eso es. That's very helpful of you. Yes, that's very helpful of you. Thank you for helping out. Y aquí tenemos la palabra del día, to help out, un phrasal verb que quiere decir ayudar a alguien normalmente con un problema o una situación difícil. Muy bien, nos vemos en un minuto. Yesterday was my birthday. Oh my God, I love my birthday. Presents, presents, presents. I had the best birthday. And so many people gave me awesome presents. For example, my friend Becky bought me this. How nice of her. I know, that was so nice of her. In fact, I'm going to call her. Becky, it's me. That was so nice of you. Thank you so much. I love my new necklace. Eso decimos, that was so nice of her. Repeat, that was so nice of her. Good. Now, George bought me these lovely bracelets. Let's see, that was so nice of him. That was so nice of him. Perfect. Now, my other friend, Alejandro, bought me the most amazing shoes in the whole world. So I need to call them. Alejandro, that was so nice of you. I love them. I know, thank you. Oh, I love my birthday. It was so nice of everybody. I wonder how I should say thank you for being so nice. I know, I'll buy them all presents. Perfect.
Bien, vamos con la tercera parte de la frase de hoy, que es I really appreciate it. Es decir, te lo agradezco de veras o de verdad. Y aquí tenemos el adverbio really, que se puede poner tanto delante de un verbo o delante de un adjetivo. Por ejemplo, I really believe you. Te creo de verdad. I really want it. Lo quiero de veras. O I really think you should do it. De verdad creo que deberías hacerlo. O delante de un adjetivo, it's really pretty. Es muy bonito. O it's really difficult. Es muy difícil. Ahora aquí tenemos el verbo to appreciate, que no se pronuncia appreciate, sino appreciate. Sh, 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 appreciate. Repite conmigo. Appreciate. Appreciate. Muy bien. Ahora algunos ejemplos. I appreciate your help. That's very sweet of you. I really appreciate it. Muy bien. Bien hecho por hoy y nos vemos en la siguiente clase. Hi, welcome to the shop that sells everything you need when you need it. April is one of my favorite customers. Oh, I really appreciate her. In fact, I'm going to call her and tell her how much I appreciate her. Hi, April, this is Sarah. Hi, I'm just calling to tell you how much I appreciate you. To say, lo agradezco mucho, we say, I really appreciate it. Repeat after me, I really appreciate it. That's right, good. Yes, April, so I'm just calling to tell you that I really appreciate you. That's right, because last week you were here in the shop and you bought all the plates. And you should know, I really appreciate it. And, well, yesterday, you were here and you bought all the shoes. And I really appreciate it, April. That's right, I really appreciate your business. In fact, I appreciate it so much that I want you to come in and I'm going to give you a free mug. Yes, because I really appreciate you. I'm aware. Hello, by the way. I'm aware. The speech is a bit long. But I'm not willing to shorten it. No, sir. I'm aware. Estoy al corriente hoy. Soy consciente de esto, eh? Ya lo sé. Soy consciente que el, el discurso que he preparado es un poco largo. I'm aware that the speech is long. Y el that es opcional. Escuchad. I'm aware the speech is long. I'm aware. Yeah, soy consciente de ello. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. Usar la M. I'm a... I'm, a, I'm aware, I'm aware, no digáis I'm aware. I'm aware, the speech is long. Pero no estoy dispuesto a cortarlo. But I'm not willing, I'm not, I'm not, y me otra vez con boca cerrada, I'm not willing to shorten. Short is corto, shorten, con A-N, es acortar. Length, lengthen. I'm not willing to shorten it. I'm aware the speech is long, yes. I'm aware the speech is long, but I'm not willing to shorten it. Welcome back. Okay, another sentence. Listen carefully. I'm aware that the speech is a bit long, but I'm not willing to shorten it, eh? No, 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 no. I'm not willing to shorten it. I'm aware that the speech is a bit long. I'm aware that the speech is a bit long, but I'm not willing to shorten it. Estoy, estoy, soy consciente de que, o me doy cuenta, soy consciente de que el discurso es un poco largo, pero no, es, no estoy dispuesto a, a cortarlo, shorten it. Pero vamos con la primera parte. I'm aware. I'm aware. Aware escrito. I am aware. Pronunciación. I'm a. I'm a. Hola, Maya. Cine Maya. I'm a. I'm a. I'm aware. Cerrar la boca con la M. Eh? I'm aware. Means soy consciente de que. Me doy cuenta. I'm aware that the speech, el discurso, speech, is a bit long, un poco largo. I'm aware that the speech is a bit long, but I'm not willing to shorten it. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware that, o bien, I'm aware of the fact that the speech is a bit long. To be aware of, to be aware of es ser consciente de, también estar un poco al corriente de algo, también decimos aware, pero es darse cuenta, I'm aware. Hi guys, Felicity here. No, guys, I'm aware it's early, oh, and I'm aware everybody's oh, tired, but we're going to have some fun, fun, fun. What do you think? Hello? <laughs> Guys! <laughs> Guys, come on! 
I'm aware it's early and I'm aware you're oh, tired, but we're going to have some fun, fun, fun. <laughs> so the theme was, I'm aware that it's early or I'm aware it's early. Repeat with me. I'm aware it's early. <laughs> Good. Say, I'm aware you're tired, but we're going to have some fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Perfect, well done. Okay guys, do you know what day it is? It's Tuesday. Okay guys, I'm aware it's a long way to the weekend, but you need to animo, animo, animo. <laughs> Come on guys. I'm aware it's a long way to the weekend. I'm aware it's early. I'm aware that everybody's tired, but that doesn't mean we can have fun, fun, fun. Come on guys. I'm aware you don't want to, but afterwards you will want to have some fun, fun, fun. <laughs> Hello again. Okay, listen. Soy consciente de que el discurso es un poco largo, pero no estoy dispuesto a cortarlo. I'm not willing. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm aware the speech is a bit long. But I'm not willing, no sir, I'm not willing, I'm not willing, I'm not willing. Will, will, will. Es el futuro. I will go. Will significa voluntad. Albedrío. Libre albedrío se dice en inglés free will. ¿Eh? Ok. So, voluntad. Yo creo que hace ocho siglos, pues, will se introdujo en el idioma como futuro, diciendo yo, voluntad, ir. I will go. O sea, iré. Futuro. Voluntad. Ahora, willing es la voluntad como disposición. No estoy dispuesto. I'm not willing. No es I'm not ready. Por ejemplo, estoy dispuesto a matar, no matarte, pero no estoy listo. No tengo mi pistola. I'm willing to kill you, but I'm not ready. I don't have my gun. Okay, willing, dispuesto. So, I'm aware the speech is a bit long, but I'm not willing to shorten it. I'm not willing to, to be willing to, to be willing to. I'm willing to, but in this case, I'm not willing to shorten it. Hey, hey! How's it going? Have you heard the news? We're going to do a hotel calendar. And Harriet is even willing to give us a budget. Yeah, this is great news. And it's a chance for me to show off all my hard work in the gym. Yeah, yeah, I'm willing to appear in the calendar. I'm more than willing to appear in the calendar. I am. I'm willing to appear in the calendar. So, are you willing to practice this grammar point with me? Okay, so let's say it together. Mike, are you willing to appear in the calendar? Yes, I'm more than willing to appear in the calendar. The only thing is, Felicity wants me to, you know, show everything. <sighs> I mean, I'm willing to appear in the calendar, but I'm not willing to, to show everything. I've got some dignity, you know. I mean, I'm willing to do some poses like this. I'm willing to uh, be the model for September, that's my birthday. Ah, and for August, yeah, I'm willing to be the model for August because that's the hottest month. But I'm not willing to show everything. <laughs> Part three, I'm aware the speech is a bit long, but I'm not willing, no estoy dispuesto, I'm not willing, I'm not willing to shorten it. Short is corto. To shorten, es acortar. Hay muchos verbos así, uh, partiendo de adjetivos como short, long, length, longitud, lengthen, etc. Threat, amenaza, threaten, amenazar. Short, corto, acortar, reducir la longitud is to shorten. Yes, I'm aware. The speech is a bit long, but I'm not willing to shorten any, to shorten it, to shorten it, to shorten it. Okay, to shorten it. And to shorten this class? No. But I need to give the word of the day. Y son dos palabras. Golf course. La gente, mucha gente no sabe que un campo de golf se dice un curso. Tiene un curso como el curso del río. A golf course, como English course. Of course. A golf course? Of course. I play golf in a golf course. A golf course. Campo de golf. To play golf in a golf course. To shorten. Acortar. To lengthen. Alargar. To shorten. 
Oh, this is a mess. Vaya lío. Oh, man. Oh. oh, hi. Uh, these are the notes from last week's meeting, and, uh, well, I don't know where the beginning is. I don't know where the end is. It's a mess. Un lío. It's a total mess here. Uh, they're very long. They're very long. They're not concise. We need to shorten them. Yeah, we need to shorten them because this is ridiculous. This is like a dictionary. This is like a, a big novel. We need to shorten them because if not, we're going to get confused. We're going to get mixed up. Nos vamos a liar. So we need to shorten these. Eso es, acortar, to shorten. Yeah, corto is short. Si le ponemos en al final, es el verbo, to shorten. If you shorten something, you make it shorter or shorter, right? So if you shorten something, ¿y sabéis el inverso? No? To lengthen. Yeah, length, longitud. To lengthen. Mira, has aprendido dos palabras nuevas. To shorten and to lengthen. And these are very long, so we're not going to lengthen these anymore. We need to shorten these. Yeah, concise, to the point. Al grano. Oh. Cumple tus objetivos con el inglés. Un año de inglés con el apoyo de los mejores tutores online. Apúntate en cursodeinglesonlinetve.com y por menos de un euro al día.